I'm Caitlin and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am a life, love and dating coach who mainly works with women to help them get the healthy relationship that they deserve. And today we are going to be talking about a subject that is very close to my heart and has come up so much recently with clients. I'm working on um, quite a few areas that involve this because some clients are getting out of a situationship which might have lasted years. Some clients are trying to break historical patterns of only been attracted to unavailable people. Some clients are starting to overthink about a potential romantic interest when nothing has happened just yet. And some people are really, really worried that their ex is gonna meet somebody. And the thing all of these has in common is that they are overthinking or fixating on one person or a situation. So today I want to do a video which is how to stop thinking and how to stop overthinking about somebody in particular. Because whatever the situation, it can be really, really frustrating and quite a toxic place to be when we're overthinking, we're ruminating, you know, we can't get them off our mind. Um, we Sometimes we can't sleep, we can't eat, you know, we start to lose our identity, we start chasing, we can't stop talking about them, all these things. And I wish it was simple, as simple as saying, stop thinking about them, just stop worrying about it. Because if it is, none of us would have any issues, would we? But actually, starting to change your thinking patterns and your habits takes time. So it's not a quick fix, and I want you to give yourself some grace whilst this all settles. So without any further ado, here are some gentle tips, I'd say, to start you off. Number one, we want to be accepting that actually these thoughts exist. These thoughts are gonna pop up. Okay, two things can be true simultaneously. We can still be thinking about them whilst desire to move on. We can still be thinking about them whilst knowing logically that it's not right. So rather than trying to block out or shut off or totally shut down any kind of intrusive or obsessive thoughts, actually it can be more helpful to simply accept that these thoughts are gonna be around for a little bit of time and that is okay. It might take you longer to get over somebody than normal. It might have been a significant relationship. It might just be the way your brain is wired and your brain has worked. So what can be really helpful in this situation is to acknowledge the thoughts when they appear, but not focus on this on them. And there are a couple of ways you can do this. So one way that I like to do is when they pop up, literally, you know, come on your mind, you won't stop thinking, you say, hello, thought about X or hello obsessive thought, hello I see you're an intrusive thought and I kind of visualise it as a little balloon and I go pop, not thinking about you at the moment, pop. So that's one way using a little bit more of a visualisation technique which some people love. If you don't like that, what we can also do to acknowledge but not focus is say out loud, say in your head or write down on a piece of paper, hello thought about X, Y, Z, I acknowledge you're here but I'm not focusing on you because I accept that this is the situation, blah, blah. You can make the kind of um, end part tailored to what you need. So you're simply acknowledging that it's there, but you are choosing where to put your energy and you are choosing where to focus your thoughts. And it can feel really clunky at first, but we, you know, you get used to it. But it is this idea of disrupting the thoughts as they are coming and not dwelling on them, not kind of going down that spiral and not accepting those thoughts as a reality. So we need to learn to interrupt them. Number two, we want to check our behavior. So often when we're talking about overthinking, we kind of expect that our mind exists in isolation to our body, our behavior, our language, our thoughts, all that kind of thing. But actually, our thoughts are intrinsically linked to our emotions, our behavior, what we do, what we say, all that sort of stuff. So actually what can be really helpful to look at when changing thinking patterns is to also focus on the behavior. So I want you to start seeing what habits you've actually built up around these thoughts, which is enforcing the cycle that you are in. So for example, are you checking WhatsApp online times? Are you checking dating app profiles? Are you checking their social media? Are you posting things on your stories? So they see them. Are you changing your plan so you bump into them? How much time are you actually spending verbalizing and talking about them? Okay, 
Are you not dating because you're gonna hope they're gonna come back? What is going on? How is your behavior kind of in everyday habits changed that support these kind of disruptive and unhelpful um, thoughts? So it can be a really good and interesting marker to actually see how much of our energy is going on this person on a daily basis. As chances are, it's gonna be a hell of a lot higher than you think. The next point linked to that so we want to change where you put your energy. Now, as I said, it can be hard to simply stop thinking about somebody or stop worrying. So what we want to do instead, because if we're accepting that we're going to think about them probably a bit more than we'd like, these thoughts are going to be there, we want to start shifting our time and our energy to focus back on ourselves. And this means really embracing and getting interested in who you are, what's your identity, what do you like, what do you dislike, what lights you up, where do you want to spend more of your time. So things like spending time with family and friends without talking about said person, getting back into your hobbies, exercise routine, whatever it is, grounding yourself using kind of journal, meditations, (laughs) self-exploration, getting out of nature and engaging with dogs, people, on your walk, whatever it is, thinking about the future, creating a vision board around that, you know, getting excited for the future you, figuring out who she is, what you want for her, and seeing how we could maybe step into this person a little bit now, so our energy is focused there, rather than on that other person. Or even things like planning trips, events, clearing out your house, whatever it is, we want to put all of our energy and our focus onto you. The other point which is linked to self-exploration is it can be helpful in some cases to identify the why. Why are we fixated on this person? Why are we holding out hope? So asking yourself kind of why is this important to me and doing some deeper digging can heal really, really interesting results. And sometimes even then like kind of the knowledge of why this is happening can make it easier to step away. Next point is focus on the facts. Now, the reality is you are gonna have rose tinted glasses on at the moment when it comes to this person. You're going to either be rose tint, having rose tinted glasses in the sense that you're thinking about all their amazing qualities, um, why you should be together, why, you know, why can't they see it? Why couldn't they maybe change? Why are they unavailable? So we're hyper-focused on kind of seeing them in this really positive light, as if you were in a relationship, everything would be great, okay? Or we're gonna be kind of rose into glasses on about the future. So if this did work out, everything would be like this. You know, we suddenly imagine this whole rosy future within them. But actually, we need to keep a list of the facts, which is the reality of the situation, not the potential. What is their personality like, flawed and otherwise? How kind of crap you feel or felt? Why it wouldn't work? Why it hasn't worked? So we need to kind of do a reality check. It can be really helpful to write a list. Um, Keep it on your phone, keep it to hand, and again, when you start to kind of go down that future planning, that spiraling, it can just act as a healthy reminder. The final one is, people usually hate this because it's, I'm not ready, I can't want to do that, I don't want to be rude, but we need to keep a healthy distance between ourselves and the person. So time and distance helps, okay? With any kind of fixation, with any overthinking, of course it does. So we need to actually now remove their presence from your life whether it's on social media, whether it's on your phone. I used to do this thing where I used to delete their number, but I'd make sure somewhere down the line there was like a screenshot that had the kind of, you know, the the number. (laughs) So when I cracked, I would still have their number to message them. Get rid of all of that, please. Um, We want to kind of be removing physical reminders if it feels right, like as Lala, let me explain, would say you block, you delete, you move on. This might feel harsh, this might feel really cut and dried, but we need to stop the reminders and stop the contact and stop the distance that is allowing you to fixate, to think and to check up on them because again, it's fueling the cycle. Anyway, I do hope that helps. Quite a few tips to dive into, so please do um, tell me which one resonated with you the most. This will also be on a blog on my website. 
Um, and I'll also have Instagram content about it too. So if it felt like too much, you can go and digest it on those channels. Um, I am taking on new clients now for September and October. Otherwise, coaching doors will open in summer 2025. So having a little bit of a break. But um, as always, you can email me on caitlin at thecombustibilitycoach.co.uk please check out my website, which is linked where there's so many details or I spend most of my time over on Instagram. See you there. As always, please rate, subscribe and review. I always forget to say that point so I can keep making free content for you guys. Bye.